ready for the Word of God? Give him some praise. Let's heat it up in here. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I, not much else to believe anymore. I believe God. How about you? I'm excited about what I'm going to share with you today. I believe it's going to bless your life. I'm going to take my time and deliver some principles that I believe will change your life and strengthen you in the things of God. Go to Hebrews real fast, Hebrews 11, 8 through 12, and we're going to start our conversation there and go further in the service of the Lord. Get your Bible, get your notes, get your pad, get ready, get your heart, get your spirit open. Get all the distractions moved out the way. It's time for the Word of God. Hebrews 11, 8 through 12. Let's go. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hold it right there. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Can you say amen? Say amen again. I want to talk about the power of agreement. Look at somebody and say, I agree with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the word of God speak in a supernatural way as we go deeper into your word that we might understand and be enlightened and be informed and be prepared and be edified by that which every joint supplies. We don't want a superstar. We want the whole body of Christ moving and operating in faith. And we call it done for your glory. In Jesus' name, give him a big amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Now, I have been really, if you notice, I've kind of been on a series. I've been talking about faith. Uh, I've been talking about Hebrews 11 a little bit. I've been talking about Sarah and Abraham a little bit. We're going to continue that discussion today. I'm going deeper into the Word of God today so that we can understand faith. Why are you preaching so much and teaching so much about faith? Because that's what we got to live by right now. We can't live by feelings. Our feelings are all over the place. One day you feel this way and the next day you feel that way. By lunchtime you feel another kind of way at dinner. You feel another. You can't walk in your feelings right now you got to walk in faith. And we're learning some things about faith that without faith it is impossible to please God. And I've been teaching along those lines. I want you to understand some things as we get into this whole notion of faith. The Bible sets up the first three people of faith and it talks about by faith Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. He did it by faith. And just for our convenience of understanding, Abel worshiped by faith. To offer up a sacrifice was a form of worship. Anytime you give something, it is worship. It's not paying a bill. It's not dues on Sunday morning. It's worship. By faith, Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That's the first thing we want to understand, that Abel worshiped by faith. Okay? The second thing that we want to understand is that Enoch, by faith, Enoch walked with God and was not, but he left a testimony that he pleased God, so Enoch walked by faith. Glory to God. Abel worshiped by faith. Enoch walked by faith. Uh, walked by faith. Walked by faith. Walked by faith. Couldn't always see my way clear, but I walked by faith. Didn't know what was around the corner, but I walked by faith. Wasn't sure about tomorrow, but I walked by faith. Oh, God, this is good right now. Because you can't hardly walk by plans and you can't hardly walk by strategy because everything's so unpredictable, you got to walk by faith. So if Abel worshiped by faith and Enoch walked by faith, 
then we must understand that Noah, through faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved uh, move with fear, building an ark to the saving of his house. So Noah worked by faith, okay? So Abel worshiped by faith, Enoch walked by faith, Noah worked by faith. So we understand that we have to worship by faith. We understand that we have to walk by faith. We, have to, we understand that we have to work by faith. Noah is working on something that it looks like there's no need for. The greatest inventors, the greatest innovation, the greatest door openings, the greatest real estate deals are deals where you are working by faith. It hadn't got there yet, but you're ahead of the curb. If you're not ahead of the curb, you're not walking by faith. Noah worked by faith. Abel worshiped by faith. Enoch walked by faith. So those are three tests. Am I worshiping by faith or am I just sowing something to be sowing it? Am I really sowing the way God told me to sow? Am I worshiping by faith? Am I bringing what God told me to bring or am I doing like Cain and bringing what's convenient for me to bring? That worshiping by faith got him listed in the hallmark of faith. By faith, Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. We understand that Enoch walked by faith. He walked by faith. He, he, faith wasn't just lip service. He actually walked the walk. A lot of people talk the talk, but he walked the walk. Enoch walked with God and was not, but he left a testimony that he pleased God. He escaped death because he pleased God. He walked by faith and he escaped death by pleasing God in his walk. Nor worked by faith. And we understand that quite clearly. But I didn't read any of those verses, but all of those verses precede the discussion about Abram. When you get down to Abram, you're getting down to a whole different thing. The Bible said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. I want you to understand then that faith is a journey. It's not a destination, it's not an event, it's not a feeling, it's not an emotion, it's not that you feel like believing God. He didn't even know where he was going, but he went out by faith. Faith is a journey. It's not an experience, it's like me. I can eat a week's worth of ice cream and one salad and I want to lose weight. It doesn't work that way. You have to be consistent about it. You have to get up every day and do the same thing. And so every day, Abraham got up and walked by faith. Where are you going? I'm not sure where I'm going, but I'm going by faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Now, I love that scripture because the Bible says that he sojourned in a land that was a promise, but it was a strange country. You would think that if God promised you something, it would feel comfortable. But the truth of the matter is most of the time God promises you something, initially it feels like a strange country. Just because it feels strange doesn't mean it's not yours. Now, the Bible said that he was a stranger in what was his. He was a stranger in what was his. It seemed like a strange country. It did not feel normal. It was not congruent with his background. It was not consistent with his past. It was not like Mesopotamia. It didn't look like where his kin people came from, but it was his place. Can God take you someplace so new that you have no point of reference in it, and yet you're willing to go there by faith if you are you're on the verge of being like Abraham? I want to go a little further with this. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He's looking for a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He, he wasn't looking for a city with stained glass windows. He was looking for a city that had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. God is about foundation. So we're laying foundations of faith right now. We're trying to understand the foundations of faith. And I, I, I want to go a little further, and then I'm going to show you why I'm preaching this way. And the Bible says, through faith also Sarah herself. Wait a minute, Sarah. Now, then I, now I, understand, I understand something interesting. See, I'm, I'm going to be talking to you about the power of agreement. And if I'm talking to you about the power of agreement, I got to talk about this power couple. For you see, Abraham and Sarah were a power couple. Yeah, 
they were a power couple before people called people a power couple. They're the only couple that's mentioned here in the hallmark of faith right up against each other. Talks about what he did, talks about what she did. Through faith also, Sarah herself receives strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Isn't it funny it didn't give Abraham the credit for the birth of the child, he gave it to Sarah, but it gave Abraham credit for the journey. It gave Sarah credit for the birth. But there had to be an agreement between them. They could not walk together, save they agree. They had to reach a level of agreement. Now let's go back and understand some things. God has designed faith to be uh, at its maximum capacity when we come into agreement where we're in agreement one with another. That doesn't mean that everybody has to agree. That doesn't mean the neighbors across the street have to agree. But there has to be an agreement concerning what God has promised you and hopefully somebody that can touch and agree with you. The Bible said, if any two of you agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done. Coming into agreement. Not just two people coming into agreement with each other, that's nice. But two people coming into agreement with God, that's better. If the two people come into agreement with each other, that could be anything. That could be a murder. That could be homicide. That could be witchcraft. That could be anything. But if the two come in agreement with God, a threefold cord is not easily broken. So what you want to do is find somebody that can come in agreement with you, believing you, believing God for the things that he has promised you. Not looking for somebody to agree with you because that's what's wrong with the world now. We only talk to people that we agree with. We only watch the news that we agree with. We're only friends with people who think like us, vote like us, dress like us, act like us. There is no fruition when there's sameness. There is no fruition when there's sameness. You need to have differences and come into agreement in order to give birth. If Abraham had come into agreement with Steve, there wouldn't be Isaac. If Sarah had come into agreement with Hannah, there wouldn't be Isaac because there's sameness. There has to be differences in order for there to be fruitfulness. The reason our country is not any more fruitful than it is is that we're always hanging out with the same people who have the same ideas, sharing the same thoughts, and we're looking to have fruit. You cannot have fruit that way. You can have unison. You can have agreement, but you can't give birth. Agreement is when two different things come together into agreement that they bring forth fruit. The differences complement each other. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We are living in a tribal society where people are becoming more and more tribalistic. Everybody gets with their own groups. All the doctors hang with the doctors. All the lawyers hang with the lawyers. All the poor people hang with the poor people. All the rich people hang with the rich people. And until we have cross-pollinization, there's not going to be fruitfulness. It is a statistical fact that if you put all poor people in a neighborhood, it defeats growth and development. Mixed neighborhoods cause people to be more productive, the kids make better grades, the people are more upwardly mobile because different types of people we learn from are differences. What has made America great is our differences, not our sameness. We don't want to just be one. We want to be one because we are many. All right, because we are many, because of our diversity, and yet we agree on something, that's what the whole idea of our country is about. That is the same idea with the Word of God. If any two of you agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done. It shall be done because God has decreed for us to come into agreement. You don't need to make an agreement with somebody where you think just alike. You need an agreement where there is a possibility of contention. You don't need a contract if you don't have the possibility of contention. The possibility of contention is you may stray, I may stray, but an agreement means we agree about this. We may not agree about, 
you may want a stucco house, I may want a brick house. But if we agree to what's in the covenant, we have an agreement, which today is called a contract. And when you have a contract, you have deliverables, whereas for the which cause, this person should deliver this by this day or that day does not mean that we both like meatloaf. All right, so we can have our distinctions, we can have our differences, but the agreement is those areas in our lives that we have an understanding that we are in agreement about, a MOU, a memorandum of understanding, we have come into covenant. Abraham and Sarah are able to defy all odds based on agreement, agreeing with each other about what God has spoken in their life. But what I want to share over the next few minutes is that agreement doesn't come easy. Agreement doesn't come easy. We can come over here, you can bring a man and a woman and bring them to us, and we can pronounce them man and wife, average wedding ceremony actually in about, about 30 or 40 minutes. But they may spend the next 10 years coming into agreement. The service and the wedding is easier than the marriage and the ever after. Coming into agreement is a process. So you start out bickering about little things. You didn't put down the toilet seat. You leave the tooth, tube out, tube, toothpaste open. You did this. You did that. You don't clean up after yourself. You don't cook. Ta -da -da. You come into agreement. See, the problem is we want everything right now, but we don't want to go through the process that it takes to come into agreement. It is a process. It is arduous. It is difficult. It is a journey. It develops over time. It enriches itself through experiences. And eventually we come in agreement. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that fell onto the head of Aaron, onto his beards, and onto his skirts. For there God commanded a blessing, even life forevermore. Where is there at the point of our agreement? Wherever we walked, however long it took, Whatever we went through, at the point we came into agreement, that's when the blessing began to occur in our lives. While we are coming into process, we can't be fruitful because we haven't come into full agreement. We need agreement. If we're going to build a church, we need agreement. If we're going to build a business, we need agreement. If we're going to have a great ministry, we need agreement. If we're going to raise great children, we need agreement. If we're going to have a great marriage, we need agreement. We don't need to be the same, but we need to have agreement. My wife and I are as different as day and night about some things. She has one personality type, I have another. But we come into agreement about certain things. I didn't have to morph into being her. She doesn't have to morph into becoming me. We learned that over the years that it's better to let her be her and let me be me so that we can be comfortable in the relationship. But we come into agreement about certain things and those areas are the places of being fruitful. Agreements aren't easy. Agreements require negotiation. Agreements require maturity. Agreements require process. Agreements require commitment. Agreements require focus. And agreements take time. I tell my wife all the time, when it comes to the bigger the business deal, the longer the time it takes. I've never seen anybody do a big deal in a short time. Anything that comes together too quick scares me. Because when something is big, it's complicated. And when it's complicated, it takes time. And you want to have the forethought to think about all the details so that if you do all the grunt work up front, when you deliver the thing you're trying to deliver, you are less likely to have problems if you do the grunt work up front. Today, we get married fast, and then after we get married, we start dating each other. Uh -uh. We need to do that the other way around. Before I walk up the aisle and say I do, I need to know who I'm saying I do to. I need to know something about you. I need to know something about your parents. I need to know something about your family. I need to know something about your background. I need to know something about your childhood. It may not all be good. It may not all be nice. But I need to know what I'm coming into agreement with. And then I need to know what we are agreeing about. What do you mean when you say I love you? What do you mean when you say let's get married? What do you mean when you say happily ever after? To make sure that we have the same vision because if we don't have the same vision, write this down, if we don't have the same vision, we're gonna have division. 
Division isn't that we're enemies. It's just that we got two different visions as to what we're trying to get done. And for the first couple to be listed in the hallmark of faith, they went through a process to come into agreement. Pastor, 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 don't be discouraged if your whole church is not in agreement with you. You've been there a few years. It's going to take some time to develop agreement. You may not ever have the whole church buy in to get done what you're trying to get done, but to develop enough around you, a disciples, a quorum, a group that brings about agreement takes time and investment. Just because you appoint people doesn't bring them into agreement with the vision. Just because they got degrees doesn't bring them into agreement with the vision. Just because they got talent doesn't mean they have agreement with the vision. Everything good doesn't go together with each other. It takes a while to find that harmonious zone whereby you can play your note, I can play my note, and we can still have a harmonious sound and not a cacophony of noise that hinders and breaks down our ability to have agreement. A chord is notes that come into agreement to produce a sound. A cacophony is when you add a note that doesn't fit in that chord structure, it creates noise, but not music. And a lot of us are not making music, we're making noise because we've got the wrong notes in the chord that stops us from getting the promises that are based on our ability to come on one accord. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were in one place with what? One accord. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. The moment they got with one accord, there came a suddenly in their life. They sat there 10 days to get with one accord. Jesus left on the 40th day. The Holy Ghost didn't fall to the 50th day. It took them 10 days to get with one accord. People who had been together for three years still took 10 days when they were in one place with one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. We didn't wait 10 days for the sound to come. We're waiting 10 days for us to get with one accord. How much have you put into one accord? How much have you put into an agreement? How much effort and work and talk and communication has gone into agreement? Is it agreement you want or control? Is it agreement you want or domination? An agreement means we got to negotiate. It means I may have to give up some things. You may have to give up some things. We have to believe in something higher than our own selfish ambitions in order to come into agreement so that we can accomplish the things of God. Are you with me? I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why I'm talking this way, but God's getting ready to bring you into agreement that's going to unlock some things in your life like you have never seen before. And the reasons you've been hindered before is that you have hooked up with people that weren't in agreement with you, and ultimately everything fell apart for the lack of cohesiveness because you didn't have agreement. Jesus spent more time with the 12 than he did with the 5,000. You can't get 5,000 people to agree about what color car we're going to have. But he worked with the 12 to bring them to agreement. Agreement is a powerful thing. Agreement is a powerful thing. If you get agreement, it'll change your life. If you get agreement, it will open up doors. Agreement is a powerful thing. But it takes time to come into agreement because not only do we need to come into agreement about principles that require some negotiation and some sacrifice of my selfishness and my narcissistic attitude, I may have to give up some of that for the benefit of agreement. I have to give up some of me for there to be a us. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But I also want you to understand that agreement is difficult because we have to grow into agreement with God. Because there's not as much difference between Abraham and Sarah as there is difference between Abraham, Sarah, and God. God is eternal. God is everlasting. God is holy. God is perfect in all his ways. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. They are none of that. They are temporal, they are finite, they are human, they are fallen, they are chaotic, they are sinful, they make mistakes. They, look, look at what it took for them to come into alignment with a God who is even more different than they are from each other. 
So when your prayer partner and you come together into agreement, that's a job. The next job is to come into agreement with God who sees the end from the beginning, who has an expected end for your life, who is perfect in all his ways, coming into agreement with God is a process. How do I come into agreement with God? Spending time, spending prayer, being honest with yourself, being honest with him. Stop being religious and pretending to be something that you're not. Open up your heart to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin to walk into your life. And little by little, the Word is made flesh in your life. And when the Word is made flesh in your life, you're coming into agreement. When the Word is made flesh in your life, when you stop being a hearer and become a doer of the Word, you come into agreement. Just because you're exposed to the Word doesn't mean you're in agreement to it. Just because you heard the sermon doesn't mean that you're in agreement to it. Just because you go to a great church doesn't mean you're in agreement to it. It takes a while for the Word to penetrate your cold, stony, fleshly heart and to get down to that soft place where you can germinate and bring forth the character of God in your life. It's a process, it's a process for Abraham and Sarah. They did not start out being worthy of being in the hallmark of faith. They had to grow into it. They had to grow into it. Put Genesis 18, 9 through 15. I'm going to show you something out of the Word of God. This is going to help you a whole lot. And they said unto him, talking about Abraham, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. Now, she really wasn't. She was really hiding behind the door. But he, and, he, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee. This is God talking to him through his service. According to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which she was behind. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. She heard the word. She heard the word. But now they're telling you about the circumstances. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. They were both old. They were both well stricken in age. They needed to help each other up and down out of the chair. Glory to God. They had all kind of medicine in the medicine cabinet. They were old at the same time. They were going through human things, but they heard a divine thing. You can be human and hear a divine thing. The situation can be against you and you can still hear a divine thing. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, God gave her a word out of season. If she was still having a cycle, it would have been easier to believe the Word of God. God can give you the best word at the worst time. He can tell you about overcoming when you're down under. He can tell you about starting a business when you just lost your car. God can give you the greatest word at the worst time because he's trying to develop your faith. If you could see your way clear, you wouldn't need God. So God will give you a word, a ridiculous word. Somebody that's listening at me now, you got a ridiculous word. It doesn't line up with your situation at all. You're old, you're past childbearing age, or you're broke, you don't have a degree in that, you don't have the finances, you're backed up on your rent, and God God has given you a ridiculous word. He's given you an incredible word. It's an incredible word. It's not credible. It's incredible. But we have an incredible God. We have a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that ye may ask or think. When Sarah heard him say that, as old as she was, as menopausal as she was, at the stage of life she was in, as impotent as Abraham was, Sarah cracked up. Ha, 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 down inside of herself. She said, after I have waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? She said, he old and I'm old, and what we going to do together except smell old? And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? The Lord heard her laugh. Wait, she laughed inside of herself and God heard her. It's not like she laughed out loud. She laughed inside herself and God heard her laugh. Has God said something to you that made you laugh 
inside of yourself. Your lips didn't move, but your heart fell out laughing. Your spirit was laughing. You said, get out of here. Ain't no way that can happen. Ain't no way we can get back together. Ain't no way I can get my church back. Ain't no way I can get that position. Ain't no way I can go back to school. And God is saying something. Your lips are closed, but inside you are just, ha, 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 get out of here. It's really, but God heard her thoughts. Ooh, wow, that's deep. God heard her laugh within herself. And he says, why did she laugh? Why did she laugh when I said that? And God is wanting to know, why did you laugh when I told you I was going to bless you? Why did you laugh when I told you that this is not the neighborhood I'm going to leave you in? Why did you laugh when I told you I was going to raise you up and make you the head, not the tail? Why did you laugh inside of yourself? Yeah, I tell you why you laugh, because all you can see is circumstances. And the reason you can see circumstances is because you're not walking by faith, you're walking by sight. Everything Sarah listed that contradicted the word of God was something she saw. He's old, I'm old. He has no power, I have no power. Evidently they tried, it didn't work. She saw some things that made her know this is ridiculous. But God is not asking you to walk by sight, he's asking you to walk by faith. And he said, is anything too hard for the Lord. I want to ask you a question right now. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I'm not asking you about your knees, your breasts, your body, your energy level. I'm not asking you about your husband, your boyfriend, your job, your company, your state. I'm not asking you about the rate of uh, 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 COVID-19. I'm not asking you about anything you read on the news, heard in the paper. Is anything too hard for your God? See, you, you, you can't come into agreement with God until you settle on the fact that God is able to do whatever he said. You can be in agreement with each other and not be in agreement with God. He said, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Laugh all you want to. Your unbelief does not make God's word of no effect. God is still going to do it. Laugh all you want to. God is still going to do it. Laugh all you want to. You, I'll tell you, your enemies that laugh all you want to. God is still going to do it. You ought to look the evidence in the face and say, God is still going to do it. I haven't had a cycle for 10 years, but God is still going to do it. I was burned even when I was younger, but God is still going to do it. My husband is weak in his body, but God is still going. Is anything too hard for God? And then after she got through laughing, in verse 15, she started lying. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. So she went from laughing to lying. A progression of degeneration. A progression of going downhill. Instead of admitting that she struggled to believe God, she lied. And this is where the church is stuck today. We've got a lot of lying saints who say they're not laughing, but deep down inside they're laughing. They're embarrassed by the fact that they really don't believe God like they should. And when things don't go the way they expect them to go, they act like God fell and they lie about the fact that you laughed when he said it. You can't have agreement with what's funny to you. You can't have agreement with what's foreign to you. You can't have agreement with what you're not willing to believe and receive in your spirit as a goal, as a possibility, as to something that we are going to walk in alignment to. We got to walk in agreement with what we're believing. And she said, I laugh not because she was afraid. And he said, nah, but thou did laugh. He said, oh yeah, you laughed all right. But in spite of your laughing, I'm still going to do it. I want to show you something in Genesis 17 that people never talk about. Genesis 17. In Genesis 17, this is before Sarah laughed. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. God said, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. You're going to need a new name. 
You're going to need a new name for a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. You're going to need a new name. You can't walk in your old name. You can't be Abram anymore. You got to be Abraham. She can't be Sarai. She's got to be Sarah because I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. You didn't hear what I said. I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. Wait, you're going to do a new thing in me and I'm an old thing? Yes, God said I'm going to do a new thing through an old thing. I know oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. I am going to do a new thing through an old thing. Write that down. God is going to do a new thing through an old thing. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her are going to come out of your wife. And Abraham said, <laughs> child, please. Abraham fell upon his face. He fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is 100 years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear a child? People never talk about Abraham laughing. They always talk about Sarah laughing. They never talk about Abraham laughing. But before Sarah ever put a smile on her face, Abraham laughed before she did. Now, this is not a gender fight. This is not a wrestling match between men and women. This is not, oh, see, it was the man's fault. It was the woman's fault. Get that out of your head. That's not the point I'm trying to make to you. I'm trying to make the point to you that Abraham and Sarah were in agreement against God. Abraham and Sarah co-equally shared a dysfunctional position of unbelief. They weren't evil people. They weren't wicked people. They weren't nasty people. They weren't mean people. But this was an area that they struggled to believe God in. You don't have to be a wicked person to have an area that you struggle to believe God in. And both of them had the same struggle. And Sarah, Abraham laughed. And when you turn the chapter and go into the next chapter, Sarah laughed because they were one. They were together. They were in the same place. And I tell you, sometimes it's easier to come into agreement with another person than to come into agreement with God. Abraham and Sarah are in total agreement against the promise of God. They didn't set out to be against the promise of God. It just so happened that the promise of God was so hard for both of them to believe that they both had the same reaction. They were carnal. They went by what they saw. They went by their situation. They went by the bills coming in. They went by the paycheck. They went by the student loan. They went by their debt ratio. They, been, they went by their mortgage being backed up. They went by the disconnect notice. They went by the doctor's report. They went by the scan. They went by the size of the tumor. They went by what they saw with their eyes. And both of them had the same reaction. And can they birth this child? No, they cannot birth this child until they come into agreement with God. As, as long as they had laughed, as long as they thought it was impossible, they could not get it done. And God said, in spite of your unbelief, I'm going to do it. And yet you have to realize, in order for God to give Sarah a child, Abraham and Sarah had to come into agreement because God did not impregnate Sarah. We don't know when she changed. The Bible does not tell us when he changed. But as they continued to walk with God, what started out as funny, what started out as fearful, what started out as impossible, what started out as ridiculous, what started out as too late, what started out as impossible, impossible as they continued to walk with God. Have you ever started out with God and God says something to you and you say, oh, Lord, no way in the world. Ain't no, no, gosh, oh, no, oh, no. And you think, really? Really? No. Yeah. no I mean, that would be hard, Lord. Do you know such such a thing? Yeah, I know. You can do anything. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you can do anything. I just don't know if you can do it with me. And you know my situation. You know my circumstance. And the more you kept talking with God, little by little, faith began to emerge in your heart. That negotiation is the negotiation of prayer. The negotiation of communing with God and supping with God and talking to God. Let the, the Bible says it this way. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You have to let it sink in. You mean you're still going to do it? You mean you're still going to bless me? You mean it's not too late? You mean you can do that through somebody like me? You mean you could use me? You mean I'm worthy? You mean you can do something through me? It took them a while to grasp the notion that it was not impossible. I want to tell you something today. Your life is not impossible. The promises of God are not impossible. That what God spoken to in your life can still come to pass. That in spite of the fact that you have to reconstruct some things and tear down some things and rearrange some things and may have to do some demolition in order to do some rebuilding, that God can redesign your life in spite of your past. 99 years old is not a good time to have a child. Even if you're able to have a child, who wants to be running in behind a two-year-old at 101? This is not a good time in the eyes of men to have a child, but it was just right for God. And I'm trying to tell you that God's going to give you the right thing that at a time that seems like the wrong time in your life. I'm trying to tell you that what you started out snickering at didn't mean that you didn't want it. It didn't mean that Sarah didn't want a child. It was just that at this particular time, it was harder than ever to believe God. In the middle of COVID-19 and an economic breakdown and a world in chaos and the country divided by politics, this is the worst time to do anything. And yet God has a way of picking the worst time to do the best stuff. Oh God, I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me right now. I hope you hear me right now. I hope you understand that in the middle of all of this chaos and all of this bad news, it's the enemy trying to distract you so that you will focus on the bad news and miss the good news. Do you not know that more people became millionaires during the Great Depression than any other time in the history of this country? While other people were talking about the bread lines and talking about how things were going down and how things were impossible, other people were buying up property, buying up businesses, buying up companies because they were on sale for little or nothing, because they recognized that the time didn't have anything to do with the promise. Every now and then there are a few people that look beyond the headlines and see the opportunities. I want to talk to Otalia. I want to talk to you today because the enemy is trying to distract you with the bad news to the point that you don't see the good news. Let me tell you something. Everybody's not worried about the bad news. Everybody's not worried about the headline. Everybody's not upset about the things that common people are upset about. Other people are looking for the opportunity in spite of the A. I'm 99, but God said it's going to happen. Happen. And COVID is everywhere. We're spiking in the city, but God said he's going to bless me. Things are getting worse than ever, but I believe God's going to bless me. The country looks like it's falling apart, but God said, I'm not looking at none of that stuff. I swear I'm going to bless you. And the headlines have nothing to do with it. And the report has nothing to do with it. And the news has nothing to do with it. And the politics have nothing to do with it. And the disease has nothing to do with it. Is anything too hard for God? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for America. Not for your state. Not for your neighborhood. Not for your mayor. Is anything too hard for God? And so I want to preach to you about this because I know that the conditions stand in contradiction to the promise of God. I know that the adversity is great. I know that there are a thousand legitimate reasons for you to sit back and be uncomfortable and be nervous and be afraid and be isolated and be depressed and be discouraged and be fearful and, 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 and sit in the back of your mind and say, oh God, I believe you could have done it in 2018. 
I believe you could have done it in 2015. And maybe you could have even done it in 2019. But Lord, this 2020 ain't no way in the world that you could shut up laughing behind the door. Come from behind the door of unbelief and believe that even now God can do something in your life until you get the kind of faith that defies the evidence you will never get a breakthrough from God. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was dead and he came down where Lazarus was and he came to see Mary and Martha, Martha said, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Mary said, but even now, I want somebody with that even now faith, the kind of faith that says, I know he's dead. I know he's stinking. I know we buried him. I know he's in the ground. I know we rolled a stone in front of him. But because you're here, even now, even now, even now, you got the power to raise him back up again. There are at least a hundred folks listening at me right now. God's got an even now miracle for you. An even now miracle. And in spite of miracle, a miracle that's going to break forth in your life is going to be the best miracle at the worst time. It's going to be something new coming out of something old. I prophesy and declare unto you today, I'm talking to somebody right now in the middle of the worst time. You're going to be telling your grandchildren all hell was breaking and lose. The country was in chaos. They were burning up neighborhoods. They were sending in the military. We didn't know if the country was going to stand, but God told me to buy it now. And because I did it right then, we are where we are right now. God is getting ready. Oh. God is getting ready to do something in your life. But he sent this word to you today. Because God is tired of you standing behind the door of doubt and fear and carnality, laughing at his word. You are believing the word of the world and laughing at the promise of God. And God said, I heard you laughing inside of yourself. I heard you saying it was too late. I heard you saying it's a bad time. I heard you saying it was impossible. But is anything, is anything, 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 if it's a thing, God can do it. God can do anything, anything, name a thing, name a thing. If you name a thing, it's anything. Anything you name, God can do it. Is anything. Woo. Is anything. Is anything too hard for God? So here she is, the same woman that starts out behind the door laughing at God. Yeah. It's the first lady of faith to be mentioned in the hallmark of the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, through faith also. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is bragging at how far he brought her in her thinking. Yeah. He took her from laughing and lying to believing. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. The one that was laughing and lying grew up. The one who was doubting and worrying grew up. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. This is a Sunday morning for you to receive strength. You've been tired, you've been depleted, you've been weak, you've been frustrated, you've been out of energy, you've been out of gas. Let me tell you why you feel so bad. It's what you've been eating. You've been eating carnal food. You've been eating worldly thoughts. You've been eating the words of the flesh. And as long as you live off of that Egyptian diet, you're gonna die in the wilderness. 
in order for you to make it to the promised land, you got to eat manna. You got to eat the food that God is sending. You got to eat the word that God is sending. You got to believe the word that God is sending. You got to settle in your spirit. God has spoken and he is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. And I don't care what time it is. God knows my birthday. God knows how old I am. God knows I haven't had a cycle. God knows what's up with Abraham. God knows what's going on in my life. God knows what's going on in my situation. But I declare if God says I'm going to have a baby, somebody get me a birthing stool. I'm going to need me a birthing stool because I'm going to go into labor at a strange time and bring forth the promise of God in my life. Who would have thought that Harlan Sanders on Social Security would open up a business that's a household name all over the world? That somebody drawing a pension, a social security of a few hundred dollars a month would open up a chicken company and end up going into business at 65. Who would have thought that somebody that old would just be getting started? That God would do a new thing out of an old thing. Who would have thought that that could happen to you? After all you've been through, that God could bring you out of prison and make you the head and not the tail. That God could do you like Joseph and bring you out of cell block B and make you the prince of Egypt. Who would have thought that God could take somebody with a broken past and a damaged reputation and raise you up and make you respected in your community? I'm talking about you coming into agreement with what God has spoken over your life. You don't agree with it. I'm preaching it. You don't agree with it until you agree with it and stop snickering and saying that's for them, but it's not for me. And it might be for her, but it's not for me. It might be for him, but it's not for me. Until you stop telling yourself, I'm stuck in the hood and I can't get out. Until you stop telling yourself there is no way out, there is no way up, I can't do anything, I tried this, I tried that, it failed, I got to stay here, I'm stuck here, I might as well give up and live like I am one of them rather than to be who I really wanted to be. Until you stop saying that stuff to yourself, you are still stuck behind the door of unbelief. Why has Sarah laughed behind the door? I laugh not, Lord, she lied. I don't care how long you hear great preaching. I don't care if you listen to everything I'm teaching on YouTube over and over again, and you can quote it better than me. You can quote it better than me. You could even preach it better than me. But until you believe it, it will not work in your life. I'm talking about coming into agreement. Abraham and Sarah, according to the scriptures I just read with you, were in agreement at how ridiculous God's word was for them. But as they kept on walking with God. See, most people don't stay together long enough to walk into the maturity place. It takes you years to walk into a place of full maturity. She's 99 years old. And they're still spiritually immature. It takes years before you walk into a place where you can look the evidence in the face and say, is anything too hard for God? So when you hear the writer of Hebrews in the 11th chapter talking about the power couple, you got to understand they didn't start out the power couple. They started out the lying couple the laughing couple, the doubting couple, the couple of fear and unbelief. But as they kept on walking with God, you gotta walk with God through the laughing stage. You gotta walk with God through the lying stage. You gotta walk with God through the fearing stage. You gotta walk with God through the worrying stage. And as you continue to walk with God, like scales falling off you, little by little by little by little, God begins to mature himself into you to bring you into the power of agreement. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength 
You're going to need strength for what God's getting ready to give you. You're going to need strength for what God's getting ready. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to have any strength. That's why he's feeding you all that stuff you shouldn't be eating in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, even in your body, because he doesn't want you to have the energy to birth, to really get that. Labor is hard work. Having a baby is labor. I see why they call it labor. You sweat, you grunt, you groan, you break blood vessels. Birthing a baby is work. You're going to need strength to birth that thing that you have started in your life and you cannot do it tired you cannot do it tired you cannot do it depressed you cannot do it feeling sorry for yourself you cannot do it doubting yourself you cannot do it walking in unbelief you cannot do it walking in fear through faith also Sarah herself received strength strength she needed strength Lord I thought she needed a cycle. I thought she needed a virile husband. I thought she needed to reverse the clock. God said the first thing Sarah needed was strength because Sarah was tired. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength. Strength to conceive. Strength to conceive. We know she believed because it said through faith. She believed. She didn't start out believing, but she had at some point come to the place of believing. You come to the place of believing. You don't just automatically believe. You come to the place of believing. You grow to the place of believing. At first you're just making noise and you're just coming to church and you're just shouting and you're just clapping, but you're not really there yet. You come to the place of believing God. I know she finally got from behind the door, quit lying, she quit laughing. Look at her, she's a woman of faith. She was lying, she was laughing. Look at all the areas she had to grow in. From laughing, to lying, to believing. Just because she was lying doesn't mean she wasn't a woman of God. Just because she was laughing doesn't mean she was a, wasn't a woman of God. She had to keep on walking. As she kept on walking, she, start, she stopped lying. She stopped laughing and she started believing. So I know she was believing because it said through faith. Also, Sarah herself. Now, she, she had the faith. She's believing, but she needed strength to conceive. I want to talk to people who are in between believing and conceiving. You believe it, but you haven't conceived it yet. And the Bible said you've got enough faith that you're through laughing and you're through lying and you are believing but you need strength to conceive. And you need to lift your hands right where you are and ask God to just strengthen you and strengthen you and build you up and get you ready and get your energy back and stop allowing the enemy to talk you into not being able to do what God has called you to do. I'm talking right to you. I'm talking right to you. I'm talking right to your situation. I'm talking right to your circumstances. I'm talking right to how you feel in your body. I'm talking right to how you feel in your head. I'm talking right to how you feel in your moods. I'm talking right to how you feel in your situation. You need to woo, receive shata. You need to receive strength. You need to right now, right now, coming at you is strength from the Lord. Coming at you is strength from God. 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 Coming at you is strength glory to God strength in order to get from believing to conceiving you have to receive strength to conceive seed strengthen me for what you're going to do at this season in my life there's no way in the world a 99-year-old woman is supposed to have strength to push like this. Supernatural strength is coming to you. Supernatural strength. Do you hear me? Supernatural strength is coming to you in this last mile of the way. God has given you strength to conceive seed. When she was past childbearing age because 
Because, not because she went to GNC, not because she started taking her vitamins, do all of that, but not because of any of that, but because she judged him faithful who had promised her. Not because she looked at Abraham and said, ooh, look at Abraham. No, it wasn't that. It happened because she judged him faithful who had promised her. Do you really judge God faithful? Do you really receive the strength to believe that even in this season, even with a GED, even graduating with two years from a junior college, even finished trade school, even been in prison, do you receive strength to conceive, see, or are you just going to lay back on the corner, grab yourself by the leg and say, I came. I can't, I can't. The power of agreement is not just agreement between Abraham and Sarah. They had that. They both made it to the hallmark of faith. Both of, the, both of them were laughing and both of them were liars and they still made it to believe it. Thank you God for patience with us while we develop. And they made it to the hallmark of faith. And Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. He had the faith to go out looking for something and not know exactly what he was looking for. He had the faith to, to walk through uncertainty. Do you have the faith to go through an uncertain period and still be searching for something that you cannot describe, but I know it when I see it? That keen discernment to sense what you cannot describe. And can you do it in the middle of a pandemic? Can you do it in the middle of an economic turndown? Can you do it in the middle of national, international, global turbulence? Can you do it with all the odds stacked up against you? And you still say, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. I am not looking to die on a ventilator. I am not looking to be in some refrigerated 18-wheeler. I am not looking to be homeless. I am not looking to be in a ner nervous breakdown. I'm not looking to be in a nursing home. I am not looking for that. I'm looking for something else. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm looking for something that has the foundations, not the finish, not the finish. I'm not looking for the finish. Oh, you didn't hear that. I'm not looking for the finish. I'm looking for the foundation. If the foundation is there, I can do the finish. I am looking for the foundation in a wife. I'm looking for the foundation in a husband. I'm looking for the foundation in a pastor. I'm looking for the foundation of a business. Stop trying to find finished stuff. You're glitzy and glamorous and trying to find something you can post on Instagram to impress people that don't even care about you. Find something that the foundation is right. He said, I'm looking for the right foundation. And he found the city. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed when she was past childbearing age because she judged him faithful who had promised. In the meantime, she had laughed, she had lied, she had manipulated Hagar, trying to get Hagar to come in. Abraham in the text I just read told God, he said, what about Ishmael? Won't he be enough? God said, no, it's not going to come through Ishmael. Ishmael's going to be blessed, but he's not it. He's not the promised seed. Any time you have an Ishmael, it's a sign that Isaac is coming. Do you hear me? Anytime you have an Ishmael, he is only a sign that Isaac is coming. Ishmael is always a forerunner for Isaac. So don't you get to the Ishmael situation and say, well, that's all. I'm just going to make do with that. No, that's not all. That is a forerunner and a predictor and a prophetic utterance that Isaac is still on his way. God, I feel like I'm talking to somebody. I don't mean you're going to need to wait till everything's over. 
I mean, right in the middle of this mess we're in right now, God's going to do it. Receive strength. Read strength. Watch strength. Talk to people of strength. Receive strength to conceive seed. Cut off all that crazy stuff you've been watching and receive strength. I'm looking for strength to conceive seed. I know the conditions are not right. I know the timing is not right. I know my credit is not right. I know I don't have the right credentials for it, but I receive strength to conceive seed. I didn't get here because of my credentials. I didn't get here because I knew the right friends. I didn't get here because I was imitating my spiritual fathers. I didn't get here because I'm imitating where I came from. I got saved in a storefront. I never belonged to a mega church. First mega church I belonged to is the one I'm pastoring. Can you believe God for something you don't have background for? Can you believe God for something that everything in your body says you cannot do? Can you believe God when all the odds are stacked up against you? This is the power of agreement. To come into agreement, Let, let's break this down. Let's break it down this way. First of all, to come into agreement with yourself so that you can stop arguing with yourself. The reason Sarah is laughing is because she is not in agreement in herself. Then to come into agreement with whoever is you are in covenant with. That this is a, this, the agreement, the power of agreement, I could have called it the power of contract. The agreement is a contract. Let's, let's come into an agreement. You and I, these are the things that matter most. And if we don't get nothing else right, these 10 things we're going to get right. And then to make sure that this agreement lines up with God's eternal purpose for my life. And when I tie all of that together, then get me a bassinet and make me a crib and make me a birthing stool because I'm going to give birth at the worst possible time imaginable. There are some people that are listening at me right now at the worst possible time imaginable. You're going to be fruitful. At the worst possible time, with all the odds stacked up against you, you're going to be exceptions to the rule. God is going to do exceptional things in your life. If you stop being distracted by the enemy trying to get you to look over here, look over here, look at this, look at that, look at this, look at it, shut up that noise and receive strength to conceive seed and you pass childbearing age because I judge him faithful who has promised me. And that old woman, that old centurion gave birth to Isaac and named him Isaac, which means laughter to say, God has made me to laugh, but this time it's not the laugh of doubt, it's the laugh of joy. You remember she said, shall I have pleasure in my old age? God said, yes. You will laugh again. I don't know who I'm talking to. I wish I could see, I, I could sense in my spirit right now that God has got me talking to somebody right now who has been caught up in the vortex and going down in the gravitational pull of what is going on in this world. And you think all of your hopes have been dashed against the rocks. But God is saying even now, 
if you can come into agreement with me, even now, I will do it for you. Right in the middle of all hell breaking loose in your life. God said, I'll get you right in the middle of it. And, I, and I'll walk you through it. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to give you the right places to go and the right people to talk to. And it's going to be a faith walk. And you're not going to have everything you need. Sometimes it's going to be finances. Sometimes it's going to be relationships. But by the time you get there, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Huh? God said, I'm going to give you the power of agreement. And you are going to conceive seed. What I'm giving to you right now is seed. I am preaching seed to you. Can you conceive it? Can you catch it? Can you hold it? Can you hold it? Because if you can hold it, God says, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you in the name that has been exalted above every name. And that is the name of Jesus. Standing here in the middle of the potter's house and I want to pray for miracles. I want to pray for radical believers. I want to pray for people who can come into agreement with this word against all the odds and believe God that even now, even now, even now, back to school, even now, build a business, even now, getting up on my feet, even now, laying the plans, laying the foundation for the next breakthrough that's getting ready to happen in your life. This is the word of the Lord coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. The power of agreement. I'm praying for power couples. I'm praying for power teams. I'm praying for power dreams. I'm praying for power ideas. If something in you started leaping while I'm preaching, if something in you started jumping in your spirit, if something in you grab a hold to this message, then this is your word. Bind it in your heart. Listen at it all week long. Play it over and over again. Sow into it, plant into it, rehearse it, develop it. Every time doubt comes, listen at it again. This word is pregnant with your promise. It's full of your potentials. It shall come to pass. Let's touch and agree. Father, now in the name of Jesus, we come into the power of agreement. We rebuke the enemy and the distractions and the doubts and the fears and the trouble and the anxiety. We've come too far to go backwards. We're in too deep to turn around. We've got too much invested to turn around and walk away. I got nothing to go back to. We're going to stand right here. Wrinkles and all. Bills and all. Trouble and all. Discontentment and all. We're going to stand right here and conceive seed. I touch and agree for a supernatural release in every area of your life. And I believe God for it. And it shall come to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.